All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you poop, with another driving vlog. And this time I uh, got the vertical video taken care of, turned the phone on its side so you get a proper uh, widescreen video and stuff like that. Although you do get a little bit of this here, not sure. <laughs> um, I tried adjusting it and stuff like that and I got a little setup here for my phone instead of the GoPro that I was initially thinking about. Cause I like this, it's fast, easy, I just put it on there, good to go. So yeah, I'm just driving to, uh, to school. I'm hella late right now, <laughs> um, but it's okay. Um, summer classes are generally a little more forgiving of these kinds of things. But I figured uh, since I got a little bit of time between now and getting to school, you know, I'd do a little driving vlog. And uh, I kind of liked the idea of the driving vlog from my uh, day in the life video, which at the time of this recording should already be out. And uh, all the other parts are just kind of eh to me. Again, it was just kind of an experiment to see if I could even do it. So I didn't really plan on making it like a long-term series. You know, maybe an every once in a while kind of thing. If something interesting's going on. But uh, yeah. So uh, something I want to talk to you guys about today is about uh, J-vlogging and the J-vlogging community. So for those who don't know what uh, that is, uh, J-Vlogging is short for Japan Vlogger, or Japan Video Logger, I guess is the long form of it. And uh, the community originally started back in the very early days of YouTube as a means for uh, expats in Japan to kind of connect with one another and to connect with uh, their friends back home in their home countries. So that way, like, their parents or friends from back home or wherever could kind of know what they're doing in Japan and to kind of show off different interesting little parts of Japan. And it's mostly in the Tokyo area, but there's also uh, burgeoning scenes in other parts of Japan, most notably in Nagoya, where a lot of the more prominent members of the J blogging community are, as well as in the Kansai area, Mostly around Osaka, Kobe, that kind of place. That's what the majority of them are. And uh, yeah, it's just been a great community, great place. Um, started off back in the early days with uh, guys like Tokyo Kuni, uh, Give Me a Break Man, uh, Jay Land Kev, My Argonauts, Kansai PJ, uh, Roger Swan, and just a whole bunch of them. But those are the, the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. But again, there's loads of them. <laughs> so it started off as just kind of a community, you know, for collaborations as well. Because a lot of these uh, J-vloggers collaborated with each other for videos and stuff like that. And it was a very fun scene. But um, every once in a while, a little bit of uh, in-house drama would happen. You know, somebody would say something a little out of turn and uh, people would kind of blow it up out of proportion and, you know, just, you know, would make the community look bad, make us look up like a bunch of drama whores. And, you know, I think now it just kind of, you know, J-vlogging is kind of a dirty word now and it's really sad because, you know, like I said, the community was at one point a really great positive place, you know, to, you know, share our mutual love of Japan. Whether that's, you know, a lot of them kind of poo-pooed a little bit on uh, anime and manga and stuff like that. And, you know, it's whatever. Not everybody likes it. I get that. But, uh, some of them do. But, uh, yeah, they just, we all kind of shared our love for Japan and just kind of showcased different areas around where we lived in Japan, uh, whether that's in like Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Kobe, or wherever, dude. And it was just a nice, very positive place to uh, showcase all that. But in recent years, it's kind of become synonymous with like a dirty word, and a lot of J vloggers are seen as like lazy, uninspired, just web, go ahead. Driver. 
Sorry about that. It's live, baby. But anyway, a lot of the J vloggers are seen as uh, just kind of uninspired, lazy, whatever you want to call it. And uh, meanwhile, the real deal YouTubers, the real deal content creators and multimedia experts, or whatever buzzword they're using these days, kind of fucking pisses me off to do that kind of stuff. Because you're a YouTuber, damn it. <laughs> You're not some stupid content creator creating the best possible content for search engine optimization and for proper viewing and all these fucking buzzwords that just piss me off to no end. Sorry. Kind of got off on a little tangent there. But anyway, so the whole J-Vlog you've seen lately has just become synonymous with drama and all this kind of stuff. And it's just, it's really sad to see <clears throat> what was once a very positive scene get uh, bogged down with all this negativity. So I was thinking, like, what could we do as a community, as a YouTube community, to uh, kind of, <laughs> you know, and I don't want to say it like, you know, Donald Trump, but what can we do to make J vlogging great again? Or at least not be associated with drama horrors. You know? How can we make the community a positive place again. So I'm just kind of opening the floor up to you guys. What would you like to, uh, you know, see in like a J-Vlog 2.0 uh, type of like rebirth, I don't know, whatever. Because, you know, like I said, uh, it's a positive community. I think there's still positivity within it I remember when I came out to Japan, that's kind of when, you know, the J-Vlog scene was on the decline, and, you know, that's when the drama was starting to brew. It hadn't completely spilled over yet, but that's when it was starting to show, and uh, even then, like, I saw the community as an incredibly positive place. You know, you didn't really see that positive side too much on YouTube, because being all happy and hunky-dory doesn't exactly get you the clicks and the watch time and the SEO, but uh, yeah, it was just a very positive place, uh, love a lot of the people in the community, and like when I met them in person, they were very friendly, very, you know, down to earth and stuff, you know, a couple of them were kind of nervous about, you know, what they were putting up on YouTube, thinking that maybe a big channel will kind of poo-poo on them or whatever or that nobody will like them, or whatever. And, you know, I was always, like, very uh, super positive about everything. Like, you know, worst-case scenario, you only get a couple views, and whatever, move on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just when I made my videos out in Japan, like, I am, I'm so proud of my Andy Japandi series. And every once in a while, I go back and watch those videos just to see a lot of the parts of Japan that I was at. And I know as an editor, you know, a YouTube a YouTuber, because I'm gonna <laughs> try not to use the word content creator as much because I fucking hate that word. But as a YouTuber, J vlogger, whatever you want to call it, um, you can't help but notice um, as you progress in your editing skills and stuff like that, you can't help but notice like little uh, things that you could have done better and stuff like that. It's like, ooh, I wish I would have, you know, maybe added some B-roll here or, you know, maybe not talked as much here or, damn, that camera's, like, really shaky and what's up with the audio and just all these little, like, we tend to, like, nitpick our own shit. Or at least I do. Maybe some other people don't. But for me, I'm kind of a perfectionist, at least. So, uh, we tend to nitpick our own shit. But even... With all that aside, like, I still really enjoy watching those videos that I made. And even though the style that I made them in was very, um, not really out of date, but just it wasn't really utilized as much because people had moved on to the new flashier style of video making with, like, a lot of cuts, a lot of B-roll, a lot of little... Uh, Adobe After Effects inserts and all this kind of crap, which I'm not saying is bad. It's not. It looks great, uh, and it takes a lot more time to make those videos. And that's kind of, you know, the big uh, fight, you know, that YouTubers have to struggle with is, you know, do you 
do quality over time because yeah you can make a nice great video but you know the algorithm for YouTube favors you know consistent content content produced on a very regular basis frequently and you know the more you do that you know the more likely you're gonna get featured the more relevant your channel is to whatever topic you're talking about and stuff like that meanwhile if you slave away at this one video which granted may get you a lot of views but I don't know if it's going to net you a lot of um, subscribers and people constantly coming back to your channel I mean there are some channels that can do it but again a lot of those guys were well established before the algorithm changed so that's a lot of their old fan base just kind of coming in so they have that fan base already built up so I'm just kind of afraid for like a newer up-and-coming youtuber you know when they uh, come around to the platform and if they try to present you know a good quality video you know that may come out I don't know once every week or once every other week or something like that you know even though the video is very well produced, uh, the cuts are very well done, all that kind of stuff. The fact that they're only making maybe one or two videos once a week or once every other week, I'm afraid that because of the way the algorithm is, it's going to hurt them in the search results and relevancy for their topic and stuff like that. So for me, it was always a balancing act between making a good quality video and making it in a timely manner because I know that there's a lot of those Andy Japandi videos as well as just my videos in general. You know, I've seen it with the re-uploads as well uh, just to kind of see my transformation from where I was back in, I don't know, 2010, 2011 to where I am now in 2016. And uh, just to see that is really kind of amazing and kind of it kind of helps, you know, reassure you that you're doing the right thing. Because like I said, you know, we tend to overanalyze ourselves and try to strive for perfection to make the perfect video and stuff like that. I don't know if there is such a thing, but uh, we just strive, you know, for good quality videos, stuff like that. And... Uh, to see some of your old stuff, I think, really helps put things in perspective for, you know, where you are now. And I'm not saying that those videos that I made back then were bad. You know, they, a lot of them were, but not all of them. But uh, it's just kind of interesting to me to see the progression, see the progression of myself as a YouTuber. I could have went cars being like really slow. Come on, dude. Really? <laughs> oh well. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of went off on a, on a tangent there. So, um, as I'm pulling in to, uh, to my university here, I'll just uh, leave you guys off uh, with this question. So, what can we do to make J vlogging great again? What are some of your thoughts looking back at uh, some of your older videos versus your videos now? So uh, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments down below in the boobity boop. And with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning into this video and watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, for the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.